And before I get ridiculed for putting live sand in tubs in the sump, I've asked around and nobody can give me a solid answer on what kind of crab this is. I know it's a new tank and I know these things will change, but it's good to have as much data as you possibly can. My name is Remy and today we're back at it again with another Red Sea 625 G2 Plus update. I last left you as I added the aquascape to the tank and as you can see, behind me a lot has changed. Before we get too far in the video, we are so close to another milestone here in subscriber count. So if you could, before we get any further, like, subscribe and hit that bell notification so you know whenever we post new videos. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. I will say this tank has been fun so far from delivery to the stand build, getting the tank down into the basement, aquascaping, and then building the tank. I hope that you can feel the excitement that I have for this new adventure and how it's gone so far. After going back and forth, and for those of you that listen to the Reef Therapy podcast, you may have heard Raj and I going back and forth on whether or not to add live sand or live rock into the mix right off the bat or just go totally dry. Well, I chose to buy some Tampa Bay saltwater sand direct from the Caribbean, and I put it in tubs in the sump. And before I get ridiculed for putting live sand in tubs in the sump, I really just wanted to maintain that bare bottom in the display. So they ship it cargo in water. And so I went to the Southwest terminal to pick it up. Let me forewarn you, at least in my case, I had to pay for the shipping upon arrival and it wasn't the cheapest. I would also like to mention that, yes, I know there are hundreds of different ways to seed an aquarium. You could use material from a friend's tank in town. Heck, I've got plenty of live rock from other tanks down here, but this is something new. I wanted to try it out, so we'll see how it goes. You can also go the Carib Sea live sand route, which I've done in the past and had great results with. Uh, also Fritz Turbo Start, which I did use in this tank in conjunction with the live sand. Hitchhikers included small hermit crabs a serpent star, and this crab. I've asked around and nobody can give me a solid answer on what kind of crab this is. I'm gonna guess it's probably not aquarium safe, but I could be wrong. If you think you know, go ahead and let me know in the comments section below. Some things I'm doing differently this time around. I sent off some tests. I sent off one test to our good friends over at ICP Analysis. I wanted to get a good baseline there for all the elements. I know it's a new tank and I know these things will change, but it's good to have as much data as you possibly can. I also sent off some tests to Aquabiomics and they will go ahead and give me the results on the bacteria profile in the tank and the microbiome going on there and I'm excited to share those results with you. Again, this is a very new tank, so while I'm not expecting a whole lot, I just want the data from the get-go. And each one of those tests were done about three weeks in. I've set a goal to do this more often than I've done it with other aquariums. I think just by its sheer size, I feel like I wanna have a good record of every measurement, every parameter swing, all of that. And obviously without a controller at this point, it'll be a little bit harder to log. I'll have to do that manually. And wire management. This has been the bane of my existence. Anybody who followed me on the Llama channel knows that a lot of my tanks did not have awesome wire management. In fact, Jake called me out in one of my videos on the Lagoon and said, hey, I challenge you to get all of those cords off the floor and managed. So I made my own controller board and did all that, but I wanna make sure that the wires are managed in this. So take some time. If you've got wires all over the place in your stand or they're just kind of hanging out, take some time to label those and get those all wrangled up. It should take no more than an hour or two. So all of the devices on this aquarium at this point are controlled through the Reef Beat app. This is Red Sea's app. It connects all of their gear. I think Red Sea has done a great job at creating their own 
ecosystem, the only non-Red Sea product on this tank right now is the heater. And that's just a titanium heater that's controlled by an Inkbird. As I mentioned, I don't have a controller on this tank. I do have a GHL controller available to me right now, but I wanna hear your thoughts. What's your favorite controller right now? Or should I do it the way Jake did it and just not have a controller on this tank? I wasn't sure how I would feel about the reef mat. Uh, I've always had filter socks in the past and I know rollers have become a huge trend over the past several years and I absolutely love this thing. It's awesome. It's been running on the system since day one. And obviously when you have anything mechanical, anything with little motors in it, that can degrade over time. So I'm wondering how long those will last. If they last for years, fantastic. Right now I'm really loving it. And it gives you a good readout on the Reef Beat app as to how much filter roller it uses on a daily basis, which I think is really cool. And obviously that will increase as I stock this with fish and corals. Project Tub is coming to a close and I'm happy for that. As you may have also heard on the Reef Therapy podcast, I am over tub life. It was fun for a little bit and now I just want it to be gone because it's kind of an eyesore down here and also it's hard to maintain over a long period of time. If you're on a farm, if you've got a whole LFS or if you're doing farming with these things, fine, that's a different story. But for me, I'm ready to make this like a cold water plunge or something like that. Who am I kidding? I'm never actually going to get in a cold water plunge. The fish in the tub that I want to transfer over to the new tank are a Tomini Bristle 2 tank, a uh, flame fin as they're sometimes called, awesome fish. I've had this thing for probably four years now. My spawning pair of clownfish, which I've also had for four or five years now. Those guys are awesome. They produced Dose, who is over here in the uh, in the NEM tank, in the little 10 gallon tank. And then I've also got a really chubby uh, Molly Miller Blenny. As far as stocking goes, when it comes to coral in this tank, I've mentioned this before, it's gonna be a mixed reef, but I really like it to be SPS heavy. Over the past couple years, I've shot some amazing tank tours with SPS dominant tanks and I don't know, they take my breath away. I don't know that they necessarily did that when I was a beginner in this hobby, but now knowing the work that goes into some of those tanks, I truly appreciate it and I can't wait to raise up some of those on my own. Obviously going very slow on that side of things. I've done a couple different build series before and the first two or three episodes are a little slow, but I'm gonna tell you it's all picking up in the next episode. I know for a fact I've got a shipment of corals coming from Top Shelf. I'm gonna get some new fish in here and that's all coming up in the next episode as we kind of slowly start stocking the Red Sea 625. As far as fish go, what are some of the fish that you enjoy that are awesome model citizens in your tank that you'd like to see in mine? Let me know in the comments section below. Before we head out, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you know whenever we post new videos. Like I said earlier, we're really close to a subscriber milestone, so I'm excited about that. If you're coming to Aquashella Daytona, make sure to hit me up while I'm there. Uh, I'm gonna be walking around as well as Evie. She'll be there from the Reef Builders team. Jack, I think, is also gonna be there. So make sure to come up and say hi. We'd love to meet you as well. I'm gonna be running around like a video maniac and be shooting a bunch of things uh, with Chris Meckley and doing a reef therapy episode. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, make sure to stop me if you see me and maybe we can uh, you know, talk at each other's faces and uh, have some good conversation about things like reefing. And um, I don't know if you wanna give me crap about how the Cardinals didn't even make the playoffs this year, you know, things like that. For all you sleuthy gumshoes, you've probably noticed in the background that the first fish that I added today has revealed itself. So he's been swimming around during this entire video. I told him to hide like he normally would be, but if you have any guesses as to what that first fish in the tank is, let me know in the comments section. I don't know, maybe we'll send stickers to the person that was right. And I told a couple of you, you're not allowed to guess, okay? All right, we'll see you in the next one.